Hello, Earthlings. How are you? Welcome to the show. Welcome to First Contact Radio. This is our last show for 2011. So we're going to be doing a goal-setting workshop today. That's going to be in about a half hour from now. We're going to get through the UFO news, the first part of the show, and then we're going to focus on goals for the second second part. So let's jump into things right away. Our space weather. Cosmic weather for today starts us off at spaceweather.com. We just had that solar flare that hit the planet, and it is creating some sort of an effect. Our solar wind is going at 365.1 kilometers per second. Our planetary K index is back down to a zero. It was in the three range yesterday during the course of the, the height of the geomagnetic storm. It's expected to be no more than a 1 the next 24 hours. We have a 40% chance of there being an M-class flare over the course of the next 24 hours, but only a minor chance of being any kind of geomagnetic activity from that. And it tells us here that the CME expected on December 29th either missed Earth or its impact was too weak to notice. Geomagnetic activity remains generally low with only a 20% chance of storms around the Arctic Circle during the next 24 hours. And we have a new sunspot, 1389. It's crackling with M-class solar flares. NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory recorded this extreme UV flash from the active region 1251 on the 29th. That was yesterday. So things weren't quite as intense as they thought it would be. All right. There you go. That's our space weather. Now, let's look at what the planets and the stars are doing. Let's get to the right day here. Okay. Our sun, as you know, is in Capricorn, and it's going to be in Capricorn for a few more weeks yet. Capricorn is an Earth sign, so therefore the energies of Capricorn deal with things of an earthly, physical nature. Capricorn is also a sign of material so things during the time of Capricorn are dealing are also dealing, you know, not only with Earth, but material type objects or things of that nature. And the idea during this time of Capricorn is though we are working with the physical things, though we are moving through life and, and dealing with physical and material, that we are always supposed to keep our eye focused on the most important part which is behind the scenes and that's where the idea of seeing past the illusions of the physical because if we just get caught up in the physical we're going to miss the point of really what's out there there's a lot more going on than just the physical and we need to look behind the scenes so that's one of the lessons that Capricorn teaches us to look behind the scenes and our current moon phase as you can see we're progressing along pretty good we're now at the 35 percent of the full Remember, it's 14 days from the time when we go to a new moon all the way up to a full moon, and that phase is called the waxing moon. So we are in the waxing moon phase. And our dream spell information today is a blue resonant monkey day. The blue resonant monkey phrase for today is I channel in order to play inspiring illusion. I seal the process of magic with the resonant tone of attunement. I am guided by the power of abundance. And once again, it is a galactic activation portal day. On the Gregorian calendar, it is Friday, December 30th, 2011. So there you go. That's our cosmic weather for today. Once again, just a reminder, cosmic weather is just, it's the energy all around us. Everything in life is energy. There isn't anything around you that is not energy. So the idea is to learn how to work with energy. We've become really good at working with spiritual energy down here, or physical energy down here, things that are, are energy when it's slowed down. But there's a lot of other energy moving at different rates of speed. And we do have the ability to work with this energy because we are certainly affected by this energy. So the more that we understand the energy that is affecting us down here on Earth, the better we're going to be able to move through and utilize that energy. And that's the whole idea. How well can we utilize the energy available to us to create the things that we want? And by focusing, we can really create things that we want. And that's, that's I think we all want that in our lives, to be able to create things that we'd like to have and 
we all have the ability to do so. So we're going to deal with these issues. We're going to talk about goals in just a little bit. But before we do, we're going to continue on. We're going to go over to Dirk, who has a message, a little story go leading us into 2012. And we're going to do the UFO news. And after that, a couple stories and then right on into the goals. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, let's jump over to Dirk to see what he has to say. Dirk, over to you. Flying high above the planet Earth, this is the Cosmic News with Dirk Bradshaw. I am Dirk Bradshaw. Well, boys and girls, are you ready? Here it comes, whether you like it or not. It's the year 2012. It's the big one, the one everyone is talking about. And of course, we are prepared with our annual prediction show. Now, normally, we would have a psychic or uh, an economic futurist come on the show and tell us what's going to happen. But of course, since this is the big one, so for this show, we went straight to the technological source, WebBot. Have you heard of the WebBot, boys and girls? It's pretty interesting. WebBot is an internet bot software program that is able to predict future events by tracking keywords entered on the internet. It was created in 1997, originally to predict stock market trends. The creator of the WebBot is Cliff High, along with his associate George Err, who call themselves the Time Monks, and they keep their technology and algorithms largely secret and sell their predictions via their website. The WebBot has predicted several events prior to them occurring, most notably the 2003 Northeastern United States blackout, the American Airlines Flight 587, the Space Shell Columbia disaster, the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake, Hurricane Katarina and its devastation, even Dick Cheney's hunting accident, and of course, the September 11th attacks. So on the show tonight, we are going to talk to Cliff High about the year 2012 and some of these web bot predictions. Stay tuned, boys and girls. You really, really need to know this And if you ask our leaders today, this is what they will say. I can neither confirm or deny. I can neither confirm or deny. I can neither confirm or deny. What's up? All righty, we have Chris High, inventor of the WebBot, on the phone with us right now. Cliff, welcome to the show. Let's get started. You said that the WebBot is showing a data drop-off. I'm not really sure what that means, but I'm sure you'll explain it. In March of 2012, going all the way into May 13th, after which there is limited or no data coming from the web bot now has there been any additional information that you've been able to gather about that march date um we've had this is going to have to be a two-part answer uh first part is that yes we've had some more data that confirms march the uh second part is that it is not a single day in march or anything like that it's a process so the data does continue to drop off in march and go into release language that is unabated, there is a transition period down to its lowest level. That transition period would take us from March to June to reach the lowest level that is thereafter, if you will, our downward plateau. Okay, so let me see if I can wrap my not-too-large alien brain around this. The data that the web bot is spitting out starts to decrease in March and then starts dwindling and dwindling all the way into June. And then in June, and after that, the data is at 1%. No, no. 1% one, one issue is separate from the release language. OK, let me see if I can explain this. The 1% uh, issue relates to the amount of data that was able to get through the immediacy filters. So here's how I have to explain this. It's going to be really tough, OK? Uh, we are uh, we're gonna we're gonna create a, a, a metaphor here. Uh, we're gonna uh, structure a little image, and we're gonna pay some attention to the image itself, and we're also gonna pay some attention to what happens within the image I'm gonna present, so that I can sort of give you an idea of what actually occurs from the model space viewpoint. If we Im if we imagine ourselves as vibrations of energy that are not solid, and we know this, then we're not gonna worry about being hit 
in the face by a baseball if it were thrown because it was also a vibrational thing of energy. So just we're standing here and we're vibrational uh, energy masses. And, and we're going to look at the universe the way we see model space here when we process through it. Now, <coughs> universe is going to throw a baseball and it's going to smack us right in the, in the face with the baseball. And we'll say that, that the smacking us in the face with the baseball we'll consider to be our contact with the future. So when the baseball hits us in the face, that's the point at which the future materializes within our consciousness. Now, the baseball itself is not a hard, regular kind of a baseball with a, a cloth over a string and stuff. It is, in fact, a baseball made up of words that are all strung together with no spaces between them, that are all twisted together, starting from a little string until you have a mass the size of a baseball with some weight on it. But because there's no skin or anything, we can see the outer words wrapping around the inner words and so on. Now, as that ball is thrown at us very fast, as the future is rushing towards us, it, like a comet, to a certain extent, trails behind some level of linguistics. Some of the words in the baseball get trailed behind. But, but the other words on the baseball, those, it's turning and twisting and spinning. So the baseball, as it approaches our eyes, is presenting us with all of these words in various different forms. And the way we have to look at this is the following. When that baseball hits our face, a millimeter before it actually impacts us, that's the immediacy language, all of the words we can see on the skin of the baseball. When the baseball impacts our face, our eyes are actually uh, at the point where we're not looking at the skin of the baseball anymore. We're looking at the words that are uh, a third of the way into the baseball. And so that would be our shorter term data. <clears throat> and then all the way down at the core of the baseball are the, the little tiny words that are our longer term data. And we'll see those as the baseball passes through our immaterial body on its way to exit our immaterial head. And it trails behind some words. So from our viewpoint, what is actually occurring within model space with the 1% is that the level of immediacy value are, uh, is that our vision is narrowing instead of expanding as the future rushes towards us. We don't know that there's going to not be any more language, but we do know that, there is, that, our, that we're no longer able to see the entire skin of the baseball just before it hits us. We can only concentrate on one or two words that are right in front of our face. And then we can no longer see when the baseball is half in our head. We can no longer see those words that are in the shorter term value. And then when it comes down to the longer term value, it's gone through us so fast that we're not able to grasp it. We've been using this analogy and discussing the, the effects here because it presents some interesting ways to look at what's happening. Maybe it's not the impact of the future that is causing our vision to narrow. It may be the speed at which the future is going through us, so to speak, that causes our vision to narrow because our ability as conscious beings is set in the current state we're in, and we're not quite prepared for the future, that is to say time, to speed up. And so our eyes are not trained to read those words as fast as they're going to be presented to us. This would be one reason to, the one description as to what we're looking at. In a sense, it is as though in looking at the baseball, we've suddenly put a funnel on our heads, and we're only seeing what's presented through the little tiny narrow opening of the funnel, which restricts our view down to 1%. We no longer know if the entire baseball is there. We can't determine. If we turn our head, all we continue to see is 1%. The baseball could have flattened out into a giant pizza, as far as we know, and as all we're ever going to see is the 1%. We can no longer determine the shape, really, of what we're looking at. And so when we get into 2013 and beyond, the projections of the data that used to be rather distinctly the core of the baseball are now 1% of a smaller reduced 1% to a shorter term, which are, are part of a reduced longer term. Now, this could be, as postulated, that we all lose our psychic ability, or it could be that there is indeed a fundamental nature, a change in the nature of reality, and uh, that nature could specifically uh, affect time, and since our brains are not cued to work on a faster set of time, maybe this would account for the sun disease, maybe this would account for the loss of uh, psychicness, or even our ability to interact effectively with the internet. And maybe all this technology will just sit around and rot because we all go into some uh, dodo bird land and never come back as a result of sun kind of stuff. That would present uh, an adequate explanation for why we have a data gap. 
would also present an adequate explanation for why we have a 1% that seems to come back. The reason being that in the universe, nothing is ever 100%. If we take an antibiotic and we're going to go like penicillin and we're going to go and try and kill a staph infection, we'll never be able to kill that staph infection 100% with that one treatment of penicillin. Uh, some percentage will always survive and it'll rebuild. And that's, just, that's why humans are here now. We've been through so many rebuilding episodes because universe favors the um, uh, disorder and the chaos that life presents. We're life and we just react that way. In regards to the data hard gap itself, uh, such an understanding would also, uh, the 1% flattening out or the shape of the baseball changing or it's coming by us too fast, any of those kind of conditions in the change of the physical reality would also explain the uh, large fall off in the data itself without really getting into um, what happens to humans to cause that or interact with it. Well, Cliff. I want to thank you for coming on the show. You have enlightened us and frightened us, I'm sure. Hey, let's be a little optimistic here. Most of the time, computers are only about 99% right. So uh, maybe uh, we have a chance with that 1%, huh? Well, I guess the only thing to say is uh, good luck in the year 2012. I got a UFO. I can fly the hell out of here. What? My clothes on? Well, I see the fat lady is getting off the stage. She's looking right at me. I've got to take her home and put her to bed. I hate goodbyes, so instead I'm going to say, until we meet again, I'm Dirk Bradshaw from the Cosmic News Network. I return you now to Joshua Poet and First Contact. They're all yours, Josh. This is the UFO News with Joshua Poet. All right, Dirk, thank you very much. This is today's UFO News. Let's jump to it. First story here comes to us from the Examiner. This is Roger Marsh. Silent UFO shines spotlight on California Witness. A California witness pulled over to get a better look at a silent triangle-shaped object that was circling a farm area and shining a spotlight on the ground on December 28, 2011, according to testimony from the Mutual UFO Witness Reporting Database. While the town is not named in the public portion of the report, the witness reports that from the 67 to San Vicente Road at 10.30 p.m. and noticed the lights at 67 and Dye Road intersection. The witness noticed that the object appeared to be circling and described it. object was triangular with one red and one green light in the rear and one white spike light in the front, the witness stated. It circled over the farming area multiple times while I was driving through the area. The object was completely silent, and after I stopped my car to watch it further, as it passed over me, it shone its spotlight at my car. The witness became frightened and called the friend. I was frightened after the light shone in my car and drove away while on the phone. I looked in my rearview mirrors but could no longer see the object. The witness included a map of the area where the sighting occurred, an illustration of the object before the spotlight went on, and a second illustration. So this is the illustration right here. Let's see if we can get a closer up look at it. Oh, yes, we certainly can. Okay, this is what the driver saw. He's in the car, sees the object, the lights, and shining down at him. All right, very good. Next story, latest-ufo-sightings.net, UFO activity filmed over Coolangup, Australia, on the 29th. Witness report, filmed in Coolangup, one orb and another appears next to it, filmed in the southeast using a Yukon Sprint night vision attached to a SVC Everflow, Everlow, Mike. Micular was kind of out of focus a bit. To focus the whole thing, I need to twist the front barrel of the scope and look back a piece and adjust the camera manual. Okay, let's take a look and see what this is. All right, this comes to us from Australian Phenomenon. All right, there we go. Okay, as we're going through here, let's see. 
All right, you can see some objects moving up there in sight, moving in opposite directions. One went that way, one went that way. So you can see again, small object moving from the bottom right up to the upper left. Very good. Uh, next one comes here. UFO, unidentified flying object in the sky over Peru on the 29th. All right, let's take a look at this here. And we see the object in question. We've seen these type of objects before, the single bright white light up in the sky. Zip through, see if it changes any. You see it does kind of uh, adjust a little bit. This was above Pattaya, Peru. All right. Check that out online. Watch the whole thing. We have a story here. Christmas UFO object described as hazy and cloud-like. A New Jersey witness reports watching a V-shaped object with no actual lights that appeared hazy and cloud-like as it passed over Christmas morning, according to December 2009, 29, 2011 testimony from the Mutual UFO Witness Reporting Database. The witness and her husband were outside watching the sky as they had seen a cigar-shaped object just three days earlier. I spotted an object that looked V-shaped with no actual lights, and I could see, but again, like the last sighting, looked hazy and cloud-like and was following the same path as the last object we saw. It looked huge, three inches across from side to side when measured with fingers, and again, completely silent. It was moving pretty fast, so the sighting didn't last long, and again, wasn't able to get any pictures or videos. All right? Jersey and our last story for today again Roger Marsh this time over at UFO Digest small orange triangles over Highland a Utah couple near Highland report watching and photographing small orange triangles and large bright white oval objects in the sky according to a recent testimony from the mutual UFO witness reporting database the couple spotted the objects and stopped their car to observe better we both got out of the car and observed three orange objects that first looked like an orb but as they flew close to us, they were shaped like a small triangle, no larger than five to five feet in diameter, the, witness, the reporting witness stated. The objects appeared to be coming from the north and moving south at different altitudes, ranging from 100 to 500 feet off the ground. Then they saw more objects approaching. As we turned to get back to the car, we saw two very bright lights in the south southeast direction. They were further off and more than a mile. All right, you can see there's a bit more to this report that gives you the gist of it that is our ufo news for today let's jump away to our song wake up and i'll be back what if our government was responsible for some of the greatest crimes against this nation would you really want to know these are big questions but these questions deserve answers it's time to demand the truth
couple of stories here before we jump into the next phase. First story comes to us here from the Activist Post. Now, Ron Paul's get, been getting attacked quite a bit. And Activist Post tells us Gingrich skulking behind Ron Paul attacks. Gingrich, a distinguished advisor at Think Tank where Ron Paul attack is originated. GOP presidential contender Newt Gingrich a corporate financier, sponsored Council on Foreign Relations member, also was a distinguished advisor at the Foundation for the Defense of Democracies, FDD, a warmongering neocon think tank and the architects of both the costly, unending wars America has been fighting for the last two decades and the resulting war profiting, profiteering. The FDD is also the same think tank which attacks Ron Paul which attacks against Roller being launched via FDD fellow James Kirchick. Now this is a screenshot from the website featuring Jim Kirchick's profile. He's leading an attack on GOP presidential candidate Ron Paul, falsely accusing him of being racist and anti-Semitic. The fact that Newt Gingrich, a contender in the GOP presidential race, is also involved with the FDD calls into question the integrity and legitimacy of the U.S. State Department-funded FDD. Kerchik and Gingrich himself. The FDD, perhaps in an attempt to maintain some sort of plausible deniability, has removed Gingrich's name from the organizational charts. However, letters he signed as an FDD distinguished advisor can be found dated 2007 and 2008. The Land Destroyer reported also cited throughout the year that Gingrich was an still an advisor at FDD. However, the links are now dead. So imagine that. Gingrich who's already been found you know, with a number of violations, ethics violations, has once again shown that his integrity is less than spectacular just by leading these attacks and being involved with these attacks. And then when they're coming from a think tank that's involved with supposed to be helping America and moving things along, that just, you know, that just really doesn't say very much for the State Department and who they fund and the programs they're putting out. So you have to wonder, whose side is Uncle Sam really on? you got to wonder that question sometimes. It doesn't really make sense. I think Uncle Sam is on the side of the terrorists these days. At least it seems to be. And uh, someone needs to smack Uncle Sam upside the head, get him out of his deliria, and get him back on the side of the American people because Uncle Sam seems to be a bit uh, out of his mind these days. Now, you heard the story, we played it here, and I'm sure you heard it yesterday about Michelle Bachman's former chair in Iowa of resigning and going over to the Paul campaign. Well, right away, she came out with a lie saying the reason he did it was because of the money. The egos on these people, huh? She can't admit that he left because doesn't like the policy that she's trying to put forward, has to make up a lie. But let's look at this. Bachman defector rejects claim of being bought off by Paul Camp. The former Michelle Bachman supporter who defected to Ron Paul team this week said he was never offered a nickel by Paul's campaign, disputing the Congresswoman, Minnesota Congresswoman's claim that he was bought off. Iowa Senator Ken Sorensen, who was a Bachman Iowa co-chairman before he resigned Wednesday and endorsed Paul, accused Bachman of fabricating a story about a conversation he had a conversation had before he bolted. Bachman said in a radio interview Thursday that Sorensen told her he had, was offered a lot of money by Paul's people. That's why he left, Bachman said. She later repeated the claim in an interview on Fox News, but Sorensen told Fox News Thursday that that conversation did not happen. Asked if he was offered money to leave Bachman, he said absolutely not. Rather, Sorensen cited past political support he received from Paul's people and said he jumped over to Paul to help him beat Romney at a critical stage in the race. I gave Bachman 110%. I believe we're at a time where Michelle is not going to win Iowa, he said. I decided it was a time to come to his aid and to put him over the top. Sorensen said it's unfortunate that Bachman is making these claims, but said I do not accept any money from the Ron Paul campaign. He did not accept any. All right. So... Again, there's another presidential candidate 
who is found to be lacking in integrity by right away lying about stuff. So are Americans going to see past this? Well, let me ask you, Americans, do you see past this? How about you and other countries? Do you see past the nonsense going on in America? Do you see past the lies? I mean, there's all these presidential candidates that have no integrity, that are lying. I mean, what's wrong with them? And they're all attacking Ron Paul because Ron Paul's standing up for the Constitution. Last I remember, this country was founded on the principles of the Constitution. And therefore, all of the presidential candidates should be talking about the Constitution. Not just one of them, but unfortunately, that's the way it is. Now, in the latest polls, they show that Romney and Paul are in a neck-to-neck -neck going into the Ohio race. Two new polls out of Iowa have Ron Paul and Mitt Romney within two percentage points of the other just four days to go into the Iowa caucuses. The polls, conducted on December 27th and 28th, appear to confirm that Newt Gingrich has no chance of victory in the Hawkeye State. The first from Rasmussen has Romney at 23% and Paul at 22%. Former U.S. Senator Rick Santorum has moved into third place with 16 with former White House Speaker Newt Gingrich and Texas Governor Rick Perry earning 13% of the vote each. The poll also finds that while Romney leads Paul by 11% points among independents, Paul has a significant lead over Romney among, among independents, Democrats, and other voters by 23 points. Therefore, if the Republican turnout is strong on the caucus day, Romney will undoubtedly benefit, given that Paul's supporters are, not, are the most dedicated there are and will turn out no matter what, a lower Republican turnout will likely edge Paul to victory. The poll also finds that just over half of all caucus goers say they have made a final decision, while 41% say they may change their mind before January 3rd. The second poll conducted by NBC News Morris shows similar results with Romney at 23% and Paul at 21%. These numbers are based on interest, chance of voting, and past participation. All right. This article's up, so you can check it out. And one last thing I want to play here. This is a story about Americans, and I want to bring this to your attention because this affects everyone. How much do people in this country really know about what's going on? Well, let's find out right now. The basic knowledge of those attempting to spearhead a country can leave much to be desired. Where does this leave Americans choosing their politicians and their country's potential future? Let's find out. Uzbekistan, I've heard of it through uh, Borat. For some reason, I don't know anything about Libya. Do you know what Uzbekistan is? No, I do not know what Uzbekistan is. Uzbekistan? No. Do you know the U.S. has an air base there? No idea. What do you know about Libya? Not much. Do you know how to spell Libya? Yes. Yes. Do you know the United States was involved in a war with Libya? Okay. <laughs> Do you know why? Nope. nope. <laughs> uh, I know absolutely nothing about Libya, honestly. What about New Mexico? Is that a state or a country? Uh-oh, what is that? <laughs> Aren't they wish at me on TV because we so dumb. <laughs> Who's the vice president now? Um, it's the old man. Under Bush? Uh, wow. I actually... Come on, it was not that long ago. You were oh, 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 Cheney, yeah. Who is the vice president of the U.S.? You know, I have no idea. I know it's Barack Obama, but... The vice president? Cheney. So who is the secretary of state? Condoleezza Rice, no, no. Some countries are at the top of politicians' list to attack verbally and literally. But how much do people really know about those faraway places? What's up now, right? Give it to me. Yeah, it's Iran, yeah. Who's the president? I'm with your dad. Who? I'm with your dad. Do you know who the president of Iran is? No. The yeah, capital? Yeah, capital of Iran? No. Do you know the capital city of Iran? Um, negative. Do you guys know what Iran is? Of yeah. course, yes. yes. What's the capital of Iran? Who cares? <laughs> Who's the president? No. Who's president? He just died. What about the capital of Iran? The capital? Yes, I do. What is it? You're asking me? I can't tell you that either. Top secret. Come on. I don't know Enjoy why it's world. bothering me. It's not Libya, it's uh, Pakistan. Anything? Any guesses? No. He's like Osama. He's the president of Iraq. Iran. 
I, Iran. Right. All right. Do you know his name? Medjedajaf or something. When it comes to picking a future for the U.S., choosing what comes next may be tough without the knowledge of what has gone on in the past and even the very present. Anastasia Churkina, RT, New York. All right, that special report. Uh, I should, what, is, what do you think of that? What do you think when Americans don't understand these things? Is it a result of the apathy that has gone on in this country? I mean, what's the problem? It just kind of strikes me as really strange that people don't know what's going on in the world, but that's why there's all these problems. People are uninformed. Now, why are they uninformed? We have information available to us everywhere. All we have to do is be willing to look, but are we so indoctrinated to not look at, at information that we don't? Are we so involved with the, the menial things of life that we don't pay attention to really what's important? It seems to be all kind of distractions are out there and they're taking people away from really an opportunity to grow because they're just going through life blind and they're being led by those who are leading them in places where they don't want to go. So it's important. It's really, really important that we're all able to kind of figure this out, don't you think? I do. All right, let's move on to our next portion. We're going to do our goal setting workshop here now. So go ahead and grab your pens, pencils, papers. I'm going to uh, go ahead and I'm going to play something for about, well, this is. Uh, I'm just going to play part of this song, give you about a minute to get your stuff together, and we're off. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Oh, shit. Oh. clip right here. All right, goals. Why are goals important? That's the first question I bring to you. Why is it important that we have these goals? Why are we doing a goal setting workshop? Well, goals help us focus. They help us focus where we're going to go. It's like a road map. And if we go on a journey and we don't have a road map, Sometimes the journey may take a little bit longer because we have to guess where we're going. So goals help to focus on where we're going to go and how we're going to get there. Do they really work? Yes, they do. There's something magical about writing down what it is you want. You don't have to necessarily focus on it every day, but just something by writing it down you may put that paper away after you write down a goal and you may not look at it for a year, but I will guarantee you that when you finally do look at it and you consider what it is that you did accomplish between the time when you wrote that goal and the time when, when you looked at that goal, I will guarantee that you will have found that you will have made an accomplishment because, again, there's something magical in writing that down. So let's take a look at the first goal. The first goal we're going to set down, and we're going to take just a few minutes here. 
on each one of these, just a couple minutes. The first one are the spiritual goals. And I list the spiritual goals first because that's the foundation of who we are. I know we're down here as physical beings, but we're actually spiritual beings enjoying a physical experience. And we need to remind ourselves on a regular basis about the spirituality that flows through us and make sure that we're staying connected with that. So some of the ways we can do that are through prayer, meditation, esoteric studies. So go ahead, just take, just take two minutes and just write out a few goals, a few of these types of goals, spiritual goals. Your thoughts on God or a divine creator. Do you have any particular goals for how you'd like to lead each day? Do you have any particular meditations or visualizations you'd like to do? Any particular studies of an esoteric or spiritual nature? Maybe spend time more, more time reading the Bible or reading some of the other esoteric philosophy that's out there. take time think about those things okay now we're gonna move on from there to our next set of goals and this would be our health and our fitness goals because without our health nothing else really matters so we want to consider our health we want to consider things like what kind of weight do we want to be at? Are you underweight now? Are you overweight? Do you need to make some adjustments? What about your appearance? Is there something in your appearance you want to adjust? Do you need to do some exercise? Maybe any particular nutritional goals or programs you want to put into effect? Take two minutes here. Write down a few health and fitness goals for yourself. Got some good health and fitness goals. Let's move on to our next area. These are the who goals. Who? Who do you want to be with? Now there's different types of who's in our life. There's the relationships that we have. There's friendships that we have. Roommates. So think about who it is you want in your life during 2012 if you don't have those type of people in your night life right now that's okay that's why we set these goals in place so take a few minutes think about are you in a relationship now would you like to be in a relationship if so what kind of person are you looking for We can attract to us whatever it is we want. So think about the type of person you'd want to have in your life if you were in a relationship. How about any friendships? Are the friends around you supportive of you? Do you like the friends that you have? Or how about your living situation? Do you want to have roommates? Do you want to live by yourself? Okay. Moving on. This is what. What do you want to do? Well, that's the big question we all have in life. What do you want to do? Do you want to work? And just have a job? Or are you looking to have a career? 
something that is a bit more of a life study. Each of these things are different, just depends what it is you want. But what kind of work do you want to do? If you want a career, what kind of career do you want to have? Okay. Think about these things. What do you want? What do you want to do? All right, you got a few things jotted down there. Next is, where do you want to be? Now, this is starting off with where you live. Where do you want to live? Do you want to live in a house, an apartment? Do you want to live in a particular country? Do you want to travel around the world, visit other places? But where do you want to be in 2012? Just think about these things. Where do you want to be? All right. Next, we have our wealth goals. Now, everybody wants to have wealth in their lives of some sort. This could be money. How much money do you want to have? Do you have a, a financial goal, a goal of the amount that you want? How about equipment? If you think about what it is you want to do in your life, usually there is some sort of equipment that goes along with that. So think about the different types of equipment that you'll need. Or how about the toys you want? Let's say you just want to play and have some fun. Think of the toys you want. some things in mind what kind of wealth you're looking to bring into your life money equipment toys if there's something else that's not on this list just go ahead and add it in it's your goals and now we're gonna look at when because having a goal is one thing but having a time when you're going to complete the goal is another and every goal has a different timeline attached to it. Some goals can be accomplished in a day. Some goals take a little longer and require weeks. Some goals may take months and there are those that may take a whole year. So go over your goals list and look at all the things you wrote down and just make a note jot down you know is this something that you can do in a day a week a month a year you know write down when you'd like to see yourself accomplish these things give yourself that timeline It'll help move you along. Okay. And the last step is the how. How are you going to accomplish all of these goals? And this is your game plan. Now you may not know exactly how you're going to do these things. 
because some of these goals may be quite lofty and that's good set those goals out of reach so you have to stretch to go for them and you're gonna make a game plan when you make a game plan what you want to do is you want to prioritize your goals you want to set a priority which goal are you gonna go for first which one second because you can't go for all of them at the same time you can only do one thing at a time and then you move on to something else the whole idea is learning how to weave all of these goals together so you can take time to work on all of these but again in priority so you know the important ones make a game plan and that brings us back to the beginning full circle to the why we started out with the why of our goals important and do goals really work the answer is yes and you will find out because now that you've written down these goals I guarantee you that you will spend time refining these goals and as you refine these goals you will ask yourself the question why why are these goals important to you why do you want to accomplish these things as opposed to other things and as you come to find out the why it will strengthen your motivation as you progress towards the accomplishment of that goal and the whole idea is to really put a lot of energy into this why because why is what motivates us why we do the things we do and it's different for everybody everybody's motivated by something a little different than the other person now Now, with these goals, one of the things that's important is to maintain a sense of privacy with your goals. And the reason is very simple. Think of a balloon filled with air. And that balloon is like your goal. And you blow it up and you fill it with air and you believe in what it is you just put into that balloon that air and if you tell that goal to somebody and let's say they don't particularly have the same confidence or belief that you do it's like sticking a hole in that balloon with a pin the balloon may not pop but there's a little hole and some of that air will leak out so it's important to understand that some of the goals that you create you need to energize first with your own self belief before you share these things with others because everybody has a different sense of faith a different set of belief and you don't want to have someone else's shortcomings affecting your ability You also want to have some goals that are called give up goals if there's something in your life you want to give up these are goals that are good to tell other people because they help keep us on track let's say your goal is to quit smoking you've been smoking for a long time you tell others I'm gonna quit smoking and they're there to remind you and to help you stay on track or if you have a particular goal that you're going to lose a certain amount of weight or maybe you're going to gain a certain amount of muscle or whatever it is if it's a particular goal that you that it's important to have the motivation of others you share that with them 
And again, with all goals, it is important that the ones we are sharing our goals with, to some degree or another, value them as we do. Nobody's going to believe in your goal just like you do, but you want to see that they at least have values in wanting to see you and not just trying to put down what your goals are. Because there are people like that in the world that put down others. And this isn't necessary. So, there you have it. These are all our goals. We got the whys. We got the spiritual goals. We got the health and fitness goals. Who do you want to be with goals? What do you want to do? Where do you want to be? Wealth goals. Finishing goals, timelines, deadlines. And then a game plan. And really it's that simple. It's really that simple. So let's go ahead now. And let's close our eyes. And now that we have all these goals, let's just end out with a meditation for today. So, go ahead and close your eyes. Think about all of these goals that you just wrote down. And know that this is just the beginning. And as you wrote down your first set of goals, maybe this is the first time in your life you've ever done this, or maybe you've done this many, many times before. But now that you've written it down and committed to paper some ideas, your subconscious mind is already going to work on how to bring these ideas into manifestation. Some goals may be so lofty that you may not know how or that what you want to create is even possible. It doesn't matter. Think as big as you want because your subconscious mind will help you to find a way to get there. So just imagine all of your goals being energized by you and the energy that you give off. Let's imagine our goals sitting right inside, right in our heart space. And just hold them there while we activate all of our chakras, starting with the chakra at the bottom of the spine. The color is red. Imagine red, the energy of the earth being drawn up into this lower chakra. Raise the energy up higher to the second chakra. The color is orange. This is your emotional body. Imagine the color orange, and then the energy raises up higher just below the rib cage to the solar plexus this is your intellectual body imagine the color yellow allow the energy to raise up higher to the next chakra which is right at the heart just imagine the color green and then from there up to the throat imagine the color blue to the third eye, right between the two eyebrows, imagine the color violet. And finally, to the top of your head, your crown chakra, and imagine the color indigo. That violet color becoming lighter and lighter, and as the light continues up into the sky, bright white. And energetically, you are connected above, and you are connected below, a child of the earth and of the cosmos. Now allow all this multicolored energy from all of the chakras just to fill your body, to overflow. Let's imagine from our heart sending love all around the world. Sending love to each and every one around the planet. To help energize them and their goals. Just as you want them to energize you and your goals. And finally, let's just think a positive thought for everybody as we go into this new year. That's good wishes, blessings of abundance, blessings of peace. And the opportunity for a tremendous amount of growth. And as we're thinking a good thought for everybody, 
Let's bring our energy and attention back to the present moment, and we'll do so on the count of three. Three, coming back to the present moment filled with confidence. Two, coming back to the present moment filled with faith. And one, coming back to the present moment happy, healthy, and whole. Happy, healthy, and whole. And there you have it, my friends. We've made it through another year, through 2011. Next stop, 2012. There's a lot, a lot of talk about 2012. You've heard it for years, and we finally arrived. We're knocking at the door, and in just a short period of time, we will have arrived at the date, at the year, at the time that we've been looking forward to for such a long period. Now, there's good things that are going to go on, and there's going to be some challenging times ahead. But 2012 is a year of a great galactic graduation. And the way we get there is through the positive changes and the positivity that we put out into the world to get through all of these challenges. It's going to be a fascinating year, my friends. It's going to be a fascinating year. It's not a doom and gloom year. Not at all. But a year of growth, a year of progress, and a year of revolution changing the guard from the old to the new of the old ways that no longer work with new ways that work and help us move forward. So think about all these things, my friend. Review your goals over the course of the next days and make your plan of attack so that as you go into this next year, you are really in a good state of mind and focused on the path at hand. There you have it, my friends. That's it. I wish you a very happy new year. I'll be back on Monday with more news and information. Till then, be safe. It's been a great 2011, 2012. Next stop. I'll see you then. Peace. I'm out of here.